next slide, we have young lady, uh, Prestine. She's already got a fan club. She's got like a t-shirt made and all that. Uh, the, <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I met Prestine, or the time after that, or the time after that, or pretty much every interaction with Prestine is memorable. If you, if you turn into the radio, uh, last week Lucy Ann Lance show, you already heard her making Harry and I look bad. So give it up for Prestine, you will. any other day, but it ended with me facing expulsion, a felony charge, and me in the jury. And what's worse it happens every day in school. Um, basically, me and a girl I didn't even know was arguing that this is the way for each other because I was defending my brother. The um, argument started louder and louder. We was yelling at each other, and students and teachers came outside the classroom to watch and see who the two girls were arguing with and what they were arguing about. So in the middle of our argument, a teacher came to the girl and calmed her down and my brother came to calm me down. When the matter was calm, um, a school police officer grabbed my brother and just slammed him to the locker room. I mean the lockers. So I came to the officer like, why are you slamming my brother to the locker? He didn't just say nothing. Just to try to twist both his arms up. And I continue myself, I'm like, why are you slamming my brother to the locker? So he just stopped and stepped back and pulled a taser gun out and pointed it at both of us. And I'm like, are you gonna tase us for no reason? Cause I asked you a question. And he just continued not to say nothing to, that, to nothing. I'm nothing to this. So while he, while he was pointing the taser gun, I just, Immediately just turned from him and turned from the audience that was watching, the students and teachers and, you know, staff that was watching. And I was like, you're going to witness um, police brutality. And in the middle of my little mini speech, you know, think your freedom, you know. And um, I get my hand, I feel my hand and my wrist being twisted and grabbed behind my back. So I immediately turned around and see who it was and it was the police officer, he jumped back. So I was confused for a second, I just stared at him, and he just stared at me, so I was just staring. And then I hear a teacher behind me was like, Prestine, go to the principal office. And then I was like, mm, I just listened, that's the first thing that happened, so I just listened. So while I walk into the principal office, you know, talking to myself very bad, um, I hear someone running after me. I didn't feel like running, looking back and see who was running after me, I was just, thought it was a girl that was arguing, that I was arguing with earlier. Um, so I just continued to walk. Then I felt a quick tap on my shoulder, and before I could fully turn around and see who it was, I had been maced in the face and fell immediately to the ground, where I stayed on the ground for like several minutes until a security guard from the school, all from downstairs, would come up and grab me and take me to the bathroom and wash my face out. While I'm washing my face out in the bathroom, um, a different um, police officer took me and put me in handcuffs and sent me to the youth center. Um, well, people, the youth center is called youth center out here, but it's basically juvenile. It's just trying to make it all uh, pretty and sprinkles and all that stuff. But while I was in juvenile, I spent several days in there and I went to juvenile on a Monday, so I missed the school. So in juvenile, um, in juvie, per se, you're supposed to go to school in juvie and learn the same stuff you learned in the high school. So the thing about that, it was like, I was so upset. So I told him, like, okay, we wake up, you know, early in the morning. I didn't even know what time it was. It was no clock. I couldn't even go to sleep. The bed, it was like metal, metal beds with a little cushion, a cushion sheet on there, and I don't know what that was. And I could just look out the window and see KFC, and I was hungry, you know, so I couldn't get it. And um, so, when I woke up the next morning to go to school, um, we all lined up and, like,
like military people and I'm just like scared. I don't even know half of the people. I see people I went to school with, but I ain't no men that was yelling at us in the morning. So when we go to school per se, we went to history and I'm like, um, I already took my history class. I'm already past that. You know, I'm in 11th grade. Why would I need history? So they was like, oh, everybody just take history. And I'm like, oh, you don't even know what grade I am in. So uh, we in history class, the teacher was just teaching us that. And I'm like, okay. And she's not really telling us to do anything. She was just copying anything we said. So it's basically supposedly supposed to teach us something. And then we went to math, and it was like, I'm taking out number one. And I'm like, ain't that like a ninth grade level? Like, y'all ain't gonna ask us what grade we want on math, you know? So I was getting mad. And I'm like, why is I'm here? It's just a waste of time. And once I said that, they was like, oh, you take five minutes, you're going crazy. I'm like, okay. And then I was like, took my five minutes, I came back to class, and I was like, is it really gonna learn something? Oh, go to your own cell. I'm like, I gotta go right back to my cell. You know, so I was in my cell all cold and everything, couldn't even sleep. So, you know, I stayed there for a couple of days, a couple of days, and I went to court. And um, I went to court, then came back, and went to court, then came back. So eventually, I went to court on the last, like, seven, four, um, seven or six days. And it was like, um, I had to plead and fight my case on a felony charge. So supposedly, I assaulted the cop, and that was the reason why he made me to the ground. Um, so I had to fight my um, case in some, um, a felony charge in court, that which took about 10 days from calling the juvenile um, when I was in juvie. So when I came back and thinking I was coming back to school after all of the um, incidents and everything, and it was like, um, no, you have to have an expulsion hearing. And then I'm like, a special hearing, they say yes, and that's where they um, introduced me to Perry from SAC, and I met her, and she was like, she like read my story before, and she was already mad, like, this don't make no sense, you shouldn't ever get expelled. And I was like, I like her, I like her. <laughs> so we was in the middle of a home, just thinking of our story and how we would go to like a home. So she minimized the exposure and hearing from just talking. I didn't need to come to the school board, so I had to talk to a, like a, a, it was like a little hearing, I went through some officials and everything. So I had to go talk to them about why I should not get expelled and everything. And it ended up having 10 days of suspension. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go back to school tomorrow because I already have my 10 days. But that was not really counting the um, 10 days that I was already out of school. So. I had 20 days out of school, and once I came back um, to school, I had met, I heard of a um, group called Youth Voice, and it was just, I heard it was community service. So I was like, I need community service. I'm already on probation, so I'm trying to do something right so I can get, um, get out of all of this and go back to um, my normal life. So when I met with um, Youth Voice, I met, um, met Perry, I heard of Perry again, so you know, cross paths again, and that's when I really knew what your voice was about, and I really liked it, so I started coming more, I started inviting people to it, and ever since I went to your voice last year, which is my second year here, um, I met state representatives, I went to an 80 mile walk, which I had spoke in front of the, um, Capitol Building, on the steps of Capitol Building, and talk, um, had a speech in front of a lot of people. I, me and you boys made an uh, assembly in front of the school talking about other solutions other than trying to get the fight. So we had other solutions like circles, or going to a principal, or going to a teacher about the situation before you even get in the fight. Because in a minute, it could be a fight over a little thing, uh, he say, she say. So, um, we did a lot of things in Youth Voice, and I think that changed me, that changed a lot in me, and I'm glad that I um, met Perry, that's the first thing, and I'm glad that I've been in Youth Voice, thank you.